Good morning, faithful listener. You are listening to the Bible Explained podcast, where the Bible gets explained. So grab your cup of coffee and stay tuned as we read through the book of Deuteronomy. Hi, faithful listeners. This is Jen here. Thank you for tuning into the Bible Explained podcast and sharing a cup of coffee this morning as we discuss some more various laws out of Deuteronomy chapter 25. And some of these laws are, well, the first one in particular is quite interesting. So let's go ahead and talk about this. I'll be reading out the W.E.B. version as I always do. But you guys should read out of the versions that you prefer to read out of. Don't forget to grab that cup of coffee. But before we start reading, don't forget that Easter is around the corner. So make sure to grab your Alive Coloring Devotionals for your kids or for your nieces or nephews or whoever you would like to get one for. Or even you can get the adult version for yourself. The adult version has more in-depth devotionals and also harder illustrations to color. Which, by the way, I, uh, I drew those devotionals myself. My sister helped me write the the children's one, but those were a lot of fun to do. I hope that you guys enjoy them also. So check those out. Those are linked in the bio of this podcast episode. But let's get back to the Bible. And also, we are going to be talking about some moderate sexual things today. So if you have kids nearby, maybe not the best episode to listen in front of them. Just want to throw that out there. But once again, this is Deuteronomy 25, 11 through 19. When men strive against each other and the wife of one draws near to deliver her husband out of the hand of him who strikes him and puts out her hand and grabs him by his private parts, then you shall cut off her hand. Your eye shall have no pity. You shall not have in your bag diverse weights, one heavy and one light. You shall not have in your house diverse measures, one large and one small. You shall have a perfect and just weight. You shall have perfect and just measure, that your days may be long in the land which shall where God gives you. For all who do such things and all who do unrighteously are an abomination to Yahweh your God. Remember what Amalek did to you by the way as you came out of Egypt, how he met you by the way and struck the rearmost of you, all who were feeble behind you, when you were faint and weary, and he didn't fear God. Therefore it shall be when Yahweh your God has given you rest from all of your enemies all around in the land which Yahweh your God gives you for an inheritance to possess it, that you shall blot out the memory of Amalek from under the sky. You shall not forget. The first rule we talked about today is one that a lot of people have problems with. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't really know why people have problems with this. Everybody's like, oh, it's so harsh. It's such a harsh law to cut off the woman's hand for grabbing the private parts of the guy. But let me explain to you why I don't think this is a harsh law actually at all. So in verse 11, it says when men strive against each other. So that means two men are fighting. And the wife of one draws near to deliver her husband out of the hand of him who strikes him. So in order to get out of the situation of the two men fighting, we don't know why they're fighting. There's absolutely no explanation of how they got into this fight. But the wife of one of them is trying to break the fight up. So she goes to the guy that's hitting her husband and she grabs his private parts. It says, you shall cut off her hand and your eyes shall have no pity on her. And this is uh, this is one everybody's like, that is such a harsh law. Like, you know, she's just trying to save her husband. Okay, but let's get into this. Let's really get into what's what's going on here. Two men are fighting. The wife is stepping out and grabbing the private parts of the guy. We don't know what in what context either. She could be grabbing him sexually. I mean, that could be logical. She she grabs him by his private parts. That could be a way to to get the attention off of her husband and onto her. So it could be a sexual act that she's doing in order to break the fight up. This could also be a way for her to say that she will do something sexual for this guy if he stops beating on her husband. Or the other reason she could reach out to grab him is to try to destroy his private parts so that he stops wailing on her husband. In both circumstances, regardless of the reason for the woman grabbing the man, she is supposed to have her hand cut off. Now, I I want to appeal to you ladies that are listening into this podcast right now. And I'm just going to tell this from my own perspective, okay? (laughs) And 
I'm going to use my own husband as an example. So Garrett, if you're listening in, I'm very sorry about this for using you as an example. But if my husband and some other guy were in a fight and the wife of the other guy that my husband was in a fight with, regardless of the fact that my husband is in a fight with somebody, somebody's trying to touch my husband. A woman is trying to touch my husband inappropriately. Yeah, that woman's hand is gone. I'm chopping it off myself. Like, <laughs> let's be honest here. And honestly, ladies, wouldn't you say the exact same thing? Like if some girl was reaching out to touch your husband, wouldn't you say the exact same thing? Wouldn't you be like, OK, I'm going to defend my husband, regardless of the fact that he's in a fight right now. I'm going to defend him and I will chop off her hand myself <laughs> because I would. There's no way anybody's touching my husband. I'm sorry. There's just not. Th this is why. It's because that woman has no right to touch that man by his parts, regardless of the situation. She has absolutely no right to do this. And that was the reason why this law existed, was so that this kind of stuff didn't happen. Now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't actually say that the woman can't defend her husband. There's nothing about this that says that the woman can't step in and, and try to say something or or get her this guy off of her husband in some other way rather than <clears throat> grabbing his parts. It doesn't say that at all. All it says is that she cannot reach out to grab him by his private parts. And the eye shall not have pity on her. Because imagine, I mean, imagine if she was successful and ended up damaging that man. The wife of that man is totally innocent and yet now... She has to deal with the fact that her husband is no longer able to give her children. That entire family, in fact, would have to deal with their husband and father having to live with this terrible outcome. It was unjust. It's unfair. It was unfair to that man's family that this happened, even though, like I said, he was in a fight. And that's wrong, obviously. But it was still unfair to the entire family. This woman, if she was successful in destroying this man's private parts, she not only destroyed the man, she destroyed that man's entire family. This is why there's such a harsh punishment for this, is because it wasn't just immodest, but it was inflicting punishment on that man's wife and that man's children also, just in general, not a good thing to do. That's why this law existed, so that women would maintain modesty and propriety even in stressful situations. Then verses 13 through 16 talk about having just weights. If I may switch over actually to the NLT version to read this, it says, you must use accurate scales when you weigh out merchandise and you must use full and honest measures. Yes, always use honest weights and measures so that you may enjoy a long life in the land the Lord your God is giving to you. All who cheat with dishonest weights and measures are detestable to the Lord your God. So basically, this is just talking about making sure that everything you do is fair, not purposefully trying to, to cheat somebody or purposefully making something so that it looks like you're using just weights or measures or whatever in order to give somebody the price of something. But in actuality, you are not. This is just talking about being fair and honest with your pricing, not cheating people. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that go into this. I'm sure you guys, if you've ever had to have like somebody come over to your house and do a job for you, that you've been cheated in some way. It's pretty common for, you know, small business owners to do. And actually, it's happened to my husband and I a handful of times. One time we hired a snowplow guy to come out when we lived at the old house. We we paid him several hundred dollars for the year and he came once and just like took off and ran with the money. So that wasn't cool. But the second thing that happened was actually the propane company. And this happened this past year when we moved to this house. And I think I told you guys this story on the podcast before because I was so irritated and so frustrated over what had happened. So we, fun fact, we used to live, the old house was only like a minute away from this house. We were, we were basically neighbors with the old house. And, um, you know, we, we moved and, and we had to move all the propane over to the new house, like the account over to the new house, not, not what was currently at the old house. We had to move the account 
over to the new house. And we had about a thousand gallons of propane that we had already purchased. And uh, we had never had a huge problem before with that. But I'm realizing now both of these stories involve us purchasing ahead of time. So maybe that's the moral of the story. Don't purchase ahead of time before you get your your <laughs> your stuff. But anyway, um, we had done a pre-buy, which means we had a bunch of gallons that weren't supposed to go over to the old house. They're supposed to come to the new house. And so I called the lady and she was beyond rude. She was the, the rudest customer service person I've ever talked to in my life. It was boiling my blood speaking to her. Insanely rude. She started screaming at me at one point and she told me that I couldn't move the propane from the old house to the new house. And I said, why? Why, why can't I move what I have already purchased to my new house? And she was like, well, because, you know, state law says this and that and everything else about propane or whatever. And I said, OK, here's the deal. You're going to move the propane from the old house to the new house because I purchased that. OK. And I got pretty stern with her. But finally, she told me, well, it's going to be two hundred dollars for you to move the propane down the street to your new house. And I was so angry. I was like, seriously, it's a minute down the road. You can't drive an extra minute to give me my uh, propane. But the fact of the matter is, and I think this is really the moral of it, I never would have gone with either of those two people ever again. Even if that propane company would have stayed in business, even if that one guy who stole our money with, with the snowplow, even if he had like come back the next year and like done our driveway a handful of times, I still never would have gone with those two companies ever again. They would have lost my business forever just as they would lose everybody else's business forever. So it's not just that God is expecting the merchant or whoever, the, the person offering a service to use just weights and measures for the people that they are doing the service for, but also in the long run, it's good for them. Because if they are honest, that's going to be obvious. If they are honest, they're going to get more customers. In the long run, it's going to be better for them. For example, the person that I go to to fix my car, I consider him a very honest person. And he has a reputation around this area for being an honest mechanic. And so he gets so much business that I can barely get in to see him sometimes. So that's the moral of the story. It's not just about being kind to other people, though it is. It's going to be good for this person in the long run if they are honest, respectable human beings that don't try to cheat others. Now, the last couple verses here, verses 17 through 19, talk about the Amalekites. And what God is saying here is, don't forget what the Amalekites did to you guys on your way out of Egypt. I don't know if you all remember me talking about the uh, Amalekites at the very beginning of the journey out of Egypt. But what the Amalekites did was they actually attacked the elderly. So everybody that was at the end, you know, the, the outliers, the disabled, the elderly, the overly tired people, even some children, I would guess, the Amalekites came in and attacked those people and killed them. And so God says, now it's going to be time for you to pay back the Amalekites. And he says, remember what they did to you. Remember how they struck down those who were straggling behind. They had no fear of God is what God says here in verse 18. He says, therefore, when the Lord has given you rest from your enemies, then destroy the Amalekites and erase their memory from under heaven. And don't forget to do this. So at a certain point in time, God has enough of people. It actually says in scripture that vengeance is God's. There's a certain amount that God will allow. There's a certain amount of cruelty that God does, in fact, allow before he strikes the people down forever. And the Amalekites, it was their time. It was time for God to dole out judgment on the wicked Amalekites that were so cruel to the Israelites, the Israelites did absolutely nothing to them. The Jewish people were just doing their own thing, walking through the wilderness, and the Amalekites went and struck down the elderly people and were so cruel to them for no reason. There's a certain amount God allows before he enacts his judgment against somebody. It's because God is very merciful towards people. 
which is why he does allow certain things to happen. And sometimes we're crying out. We're like, God, like, you know, why do you allow these things to happen to us? Why do you allow such and such to be so cruel to us or this person to do that? Or, you know, this family that I know over here, they're being tortured by such and such. Why do you allow all this stuff to happen? But it's because God is very merciful and he sees the entire picture all the time. We can only see what's directly in front of us. We can only feel the pain we're experiencing right now. But God can see the entire picture, past, present, and future. Not to mention all the outliers and everything like that. The uh, the other things that we can't see. Other people that might be affected or something like that. God does see all. But there's a point in time where God will eventually say, enough is enough. And justice will be given to us. This is why we don't enact vengeance. This is why Christians are are taught never to, you know, dole out vengeance themselves because God will do it for you. And when God does it, it's so much bigger than you can ever imagine. And you will be given justice and you will be given freedom from whatever was persecuting you, whatever pain you were experiencing. You will be free from all of that when God finally gives you the justice you're desiring. Faithful listeners, I was wondering if you could all consider praying for me right now. I've been really, really sick with migraines recently. Um, I go through these like cycles of migraines and I am currently going through them right now and they are just absolutely excruciating and I have a really, really hard time functioning through them. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I'm in migraines, my mental health goes like down the tubes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because I am just in pain and I just want the pain to be over with. It is just so bad. So I do hope that you guys would consider praying for me and just pray that God would heal me from these or at least that I could get some sort of answers as to what is causing these so I can at least fix them in the future. But guys, if you have any prayer requests yourself, feel free to reach out whenever you want and you'll find my information in the bio of the podcast episode. I will write you down in my little prayer journal. Friends and faithful listeners, I will see you all tomorrow for an episode out of John. Until then, happy listening and God bless.